Hey guys, welcome back to another flashlight review. Today we're going to be looking at the Wubin T1, and most of us know that Wubin make a ton of EDC and general purpose lights, but it wasn't until recently that I realized that they also do a range of tactical flashlights, and the T1 really stood out to me among the rest, apart from it looking pretty much like a lightsaber if you compare it to the others in the Wubin tactical range. I think this one is the pretty much the most fully decked out version with everything that you'd want in a tactical light. There's also some really unique features I've never seen before. So make sure you hang around if you want to find out more. Surprisingly, it's not even Wubin's most expensive tactical light out there. So let's have a look at what you get in the box. So this is pretty much everything that you get in the kit. And this is an 18650 cell, 3100 milliamp hour cell. There's no port on there. It's a button top. As you can see there, it's charged in the flashlight itself. You get one of these little tactical grippy ring things that you put around the back of the flashlight. So it actually comes attached to it. I just took it off. Just helps you with holding it and gripping it. There's a instruction manual. And I didn't even have to use this because funny enough, if you open up the uh, little box, you can see here on the left, it actually has all the instructions that you need to get this, the light going, it's pretty simple. And you also get one of these lanyards, basics or lanyard. I never used these, so I mean, for me, it's not a big deal. Would it be nice if we would included some kind of holster? But yeah, this is basically it. You get the USB-C charging cable. There's a clip attached to the T1 itself. So it's quite a large clip and you know, something like this, you can just clip onto your belt. So yeah, the fact that it doesn't come with a holster is definitely not a deal breaker. And I'll just show you a little bit of the box as well. So yeah, I kind of opened it up before so you can see sort of magnetic, but on the back, if you want to pause the video here, there are some little details. So you can sort of zoom in and just have a look and see the specifications. So this here is a little size comparison and you can see the Wubin T1 here in the right pretty much the largest out of all of these flashlights. The battery tube is not as thick as some of the ones like the you know, Next Torch TA30 C Max, even the TK20R, I'd say they're pretty similar. You've got this one here, the Nightcore P23i as well. And it's really this bezel, this large diameter bezel that makes it stick out from all the rest, even compared to the Next Torch TA30 C Max, you can see, I mean, the reflector is just a lot larger and it's deeper as well. So yeah, it is the longest torch and uh, yeah, 18650. Alrighty, so here's a little close up of the Wubin T1. And as you can see, the machining is very high quality. I do like the intricate details that you see just on the battery tube and knurling. There's some deeper cutouts around the head as well. That's going to help improve the heat dissipation. It feels really robust and solid. Like it could take a could take a decent hit. And, you know, the anodizing is this sort of glossy, slightly glossy black. And I do find it a bit slippery. It's kind of the same anodizing you find on the Wubin C2, C3. But thankfully, there's some decent knurling here and also this tactical ring here that you can use to sort of hold the the light so it stops it from slipping in any way i find that this silicon or rubber tactical ring really sort of helps to guide your hand to the most balanced grip so i tend to just put the first three fingers here and then the index finger above the grip and it's great because the balancing point is actually just below the head of the light okay which is perfect based on this sort of standard grip. It's quite surprising given how large the head is. I thought it'd be really, really too head heavy. One of the features I really love on this light is that it has a USB port, but it's hidden underneath this ring here. So you sort of unscrew it like that. You've also got a battery indicator. And as you can see, there's a pretty large O-ring there, which is gonna stop water from getting in. And I think this is a great feature on tactical flashlights. You do see some tactical lights that have rubber ports and they always get worried about those like just having water potentially get in there but you're not going to have any issue and also if you drop it or you you know hit it on a rock or something like that you don't want to risk damaging that usb port 
This provides an actual physical barrier. Did mention this clip before and this double-sided clip, pretty large clip, and it's fixed to the light by these two torque screws. And I find this works best if you want to attach it onto your belt. I mean, even using this side as well, you can attach it downwards on your belt. And yeah, I wouldn't put it in the pocket. It's just not really going to fit so well there, unless you've got some looser jeans or something like that, that head's just going to get in the way. But uh, I like that there's a bit of a, see there's a kind of lip here, which makes it easy to uh, just affix to your belt. You don't have to, I know some of these clips, you have to sort of pull them a little bit and then stick them onto your belt. One of the most interesting things about this light is the tail switch. I've never seen this design before. And it's a single switch that can be activated in three different ways. So you can basically push it um, upwards or basically up or down like that. And then you can press it forwards halfway momentary and then click it completely to turn on the light. Initially, I was wondering how comfortable this would feel, but basically if you're just holding the light like this, it's really quite simple. You can have your thumb underneath, you know, from the above, you know, nothing's really gonna happen, but but basically it's, it feels quite intuitive and I like how it's not over complicated. You see some tactile flashlights, they have two, you know, two buttons, sometimes even three buttons and a ring and stuff like that. But just having one button like that just makes it so simple. And, you know, in the tactical flashlight, the, more, the simpler, the better in my opinion. This design allows you one step access to strobe and turbo. And it also tail stands. This is a little peek under the hood. And you can see here it's uh, you've got the SST40 paired with a large smooth reflector. And I do wonder why Wubin didn't opt for the SFT40. We'll create an option for that. It would be nice to see that in the future. That would also increase the throw even further. But I'll go through the throw figures later, which are still very impressive. You've also got this crenulated bezel here. It's made of aluminium and allows you to sort of see when the light is on. So, you know, see it kind of just go around the side like that potentially use it to as an edge to break a window or something like that and then you've got a glass lens on the front okay so i'm going to go through the ui to show you how this light works there's two configurations to choose from there's tactical and outdoor and both of these configurations are almost identical except that outdoor mode enables mode memory and also allows you access to four brightness modes, eco, low, medium, and high. When you're in tactical mode, you only have access to basically two modes, high and low. So in order to switch configurations, you basically tap that button five times and press on the six clicks. So one, two, three, four, five, click, and then the light will blink three times. Now, at the moment, it's on the tactical configuration mode. So essentially how it works, you half press to access high, okay, full press, to just have the light on. And if you rock this button upwards or downwards, it goes straight into strobe. Now, if you hold that button for more than two seconds, the strobe button, the strobe feature stays on, okay? When you're in the high mode, you can press that button again upwards and then it goes to low. So it just basically cycles between high and low, okay? Pretty basic. And what you can do as well, there's also a hidden SOS mode. So you can double uh, double press like that on the switch and then it just goes into SOS mode. Any type of press after that will just deactivate it. So one, two, I think if you, yeah, even if you press that button up again. So the cool thing is that even if you have been using the low mode, say if I'm on low mode like that and I turn the flashlight off, it always starts in high. So I think that's a really, important feature with a tactical light. I do find with some other lights, even with the Phoenix lights, if you've got it in a lower mode and you turn the light off, it will not start in the highest mode. So you have to always remember to, to leave it off in the, in the highest mode. And sometimes when I'm turning off the flashlight, you know, I might press a button accidentally and just forget that it's on low and then I keep it in my pocket and I realize when I need to activate it, oh, it's still on low. So it's good that it always starts in the highest mode. Now we'll swap over to that outdoor mode one, two, three, four, five, press on the six click. 
Okay, so now it's out in outdoor mode. And the only difference in outdoor mode is that when you, uh, like I said, it's got mode memory. So if I, this is in, uh, yeah, so you rock it up one, two, three, four. So there's four brightness settings, eco, low, medium, and high. Okay, so say I've got it in eco mode, turn the flashlight off. Okay, now if I hit halfway, half press, you've got momentary eco mode, full press, you've got access to the lowest mode. So whatever mode that you've had it in before, it's going to memorize that. Okay, but pretty much apart from that, it's exactly the the same. So I tend to just have mine in the tactical mode, but uh, yeah, depends. And I like that it has that option to switch it to outdoors. So if you're using it for other purposes and you know you want access to those other other uh, you know low to medium modes, this light is available. So yeah, people using it around the house, camping, hiking, and stuff like that, it's also quite a suitable option. Okay, so I ran a bunch of ceiling bounce tests and you can see this is the first one here in the high mode, so basically the highest mode. And I started out the light and you see there it's on 100% and you pretty much get 95 to 100% output all the way to two minutes where the light pretty much ramps down very quickly to about 30%. Finish that test off around about 11 minutes. So I think that's pretty good for a light of this size. I mean, you've got a larger head, especially it's able to hold that uh, output, that initial output of 2000 lumens for a lot longer. You see a lot of other tactical flashlights that step down very quickly at the 30 second mark. So two minutes before it steps down is really impressive in my opinion. This is another test that I ran on the medium mode. So the second highest mode, and you can see here that there's no change, 40 minutes, basically the light hovers between pretty much 95 to 100% of its output. So good to know that there is sustained output and yeah, consistent output as well. So I ran a bunch of tests on my Oppo Light Master Pro and I actually got 568 meters of throw on the high mode. Really impressive, but at the same time, you know, wasn't too surprised given that you've got this larger reflector, large smooth reflector in there. It's an SST40, but I can see if you got an SFT40 in there, you'd probably improve the throw by probably another 100, 150 meters. So you can see also the CRI color rendering index range from 62 to 65. Nothing special there. It's a light design for visibility. CCT range from 5,184 to 5,869, increasing as you go into the higher modes. I was really impressed with how large that hotspot was. Perfectly round hotspot, ample amounts of spill as well. That SST40 really has the advantage here in producing a nicer, lightly diffused beam compared to the SFT40. But this does come at a slight reduction in throw. But it's a good thing that we've been having included this large smooth reflector in there because it does a great job in increasing the range of this flashlight. And I did also notice that on the lower modes, so you know, eco and low, the beam was a little greenish, which is pretty common with the SST40. So some considerations to be aware of. Of course, this is pretty large for an 18650 flashlight. And I wonder why Wubin didn't opt for something like a 21700 cell configuration and just included one of those 18650 slash CR123 adapter cartridges. The head of the light is pretty large. And I think for me anyway, you know, small increase in the diameter of the battery tube would have been tolerable given the advantage of a high capacity cell. But it's not a deal breaker. The 18650 provides enough juice for sustained outputs. And another positive is that you can just quickly add in those two CR123 primaries in this light as well when, you, when you're in an emergency situation, though you only get access to the low and the medium mode on that on the uh, CR123 primaries. And I guess another positive is that this larger head means improved heat dissipation, which is why you get that extra sustained output on the highest mode. There's also some limited accessories in this kit. And I did mention this before, but a holster would have been nice. The clip here is sturdy enough to carry on your belt though. And yeah, I would have liked if Wubin included a few other LED choices. It would have been good to have an updated SFT40, XHP 70.3 high in there as well would be fantastic, especially because, yeah, with that larger emitter, that 70.3 high, this, I think it would pair very well uh, with this larger reflector too. 
And uh, the other thing I could think of is there's no shortcut to eco mode unless you basically have it in the outdoor mode and uh, get it to memorize the, the eco mode. Overall, I'm really impressed with the Wubin T1. This is a solid tactical flashlight, and I think it's fit for duty applications, security patrol, and the fact that it's also got that outdoor mode really transforms light into this general purpose general purpose uh, flashlight as well for using around the house or hiking. So if you're interested in getting one, I've left a link in the description. You'll be able to get a special discount off my link. And if you have any questions, just let me know down in the comments below and I will get back to you. If you enjoyed the video, do me a favor as well and click the like button so that I can get my video out to more people. It doesn't cost you anything. And if you want to see more flashlight reviews and keep updated with the newest lights out there, make sure you subscribe. Ruben T1, and we're going to put it firstly onto the eco mode, and you can see it up ahead, maybe a few meters, but it's not much use past maybe about 10 or so meters, especially there's a bit of ambient light coming around here as well. Second step, okay, now this is, this is pretty good and um, up to sort of short to medium range. So you can see, lighting up all these trees up in the foreground very easily. Okay, third step. And now we're talking, it's getting all the way to the back, illuminating those trees all the way to the back. So this is a very sustainable mode. It um, basically just holds this mode for, for the 40 minutes or whatever that I was testing the light for without any step down so and I can say this will pretty much suffice for almost any any uh, situation okay look at that the SFT SST40 I mean produces a more kind of diffused hot spot in the center okay, so it's not as thoroughly as the SFT40 but because of this large smooth reflector you get so much throw. Look at that, and this is the highest mode. This is incredible. Wow. And that's what I mean with the this SST40. Look at how large that hotspot is. Illuminates so much in that field, basically the whole whole field. Okay. You almost can't believe this amount of light is coming out of this this flashlight. Sliding up all those trees with ease.